Back with you now on the news feed late night when we continue looking at the irregular appointments at uh, the NSFAS, uh, the scheme coming under fire. The FF has called for the resignation of the National Student Financial Aid Scheme Administrator, Randall Carlson, amid claims he flouted recruitment policies and procedures at the scheme. Joining me to talk about this now is the FF head of, pri uh, of the presidency, Sinao Tambo, as well as uh, SASCO President Mamanye uh, Matiwane. Gentlemen, good evening and thank you very much for your time. Sinao I'll start with you tonight. Uh, you are taking an even uh, a more extreme position than that of the Portfolio Committee, which says they want to conduct an inquiry. You are calling for the immediate resignation of the administrator uh, because he, you're saying he's compromised. Why such a, a, a dr drastic and radical position? Absolutely, Tabo. The economic freedom fighters of the belief that Randall Carlson is a compromised individual who has put into jeopardy the developmental prospects in higher education. He has done this by uh, putting the entity into disrepute and making it unworkable in terms of uh, victimizing workers, shifting them from posts, uh, subjecting them to frivolous disciplinary hearings, all in the attempt to pave a path to the appointment of those he is associated with. It's the highest level of corruption. And it also just reminds us that the problems in the entity can be traced to the compromised behavior of Randall Carlson himself in terms of allowances coming in uh, slowly to students, in terms of uh, students being subjected to hunger for months uh, while they're on our campuses. And of course, the problems with Carlson are historic in terms of the crisis that we face. And I think it's time that his resignation comes to pass. And if he has any ounce of integrity left, since he was able to confess to his sins at the portfolio committee, he will resign with due effect uh, failure to do so, the FF is of course taking the, the matter further in terms of going to the public protector uh, and the Minister of Higher Education. Yeah. Now regarding the allegations, he, his uh, input at the Portfolio Committee is that when he came into NSFAS in 2018, I think he says, uh, there was a, a lack of technical capacity uh, that he needed to fill and therefore he felt he needed to make the necessary appointments in order to improve uh, the situation at, at the scheme. Uh, what do you make of that submission? That's absolutely ridiculous. There's no justification for corruption and flouting regulations that dictate and guide uh, appointment and procurement processes. It cannot be that uh, because I feel that a friend of mine is competent to perform a role, I ignore normal processes and I practice bias by submitting my friend's CV to the Human Resources Department. It's, it, that's not how uh, any operation, that's not, not how any state entity or organ should operate. There's no justification for that. My own subjective perspectives on a person's capacity, capacity and competency should never guide an entity that has to account as checks and balances and, of course, is responsible for so many futures of young people in this country. And it's a slippery slope. And, of course, I was listening to you speak to the chair of the portfolio committee earlier on, there must be, and we are of the firm belief that there are much deeper corrupt issues occurring at NASFAS as a result of Randall Carlson's uh, corruption. Because if we pull the thread further, anyone who can flout regulatory processes in terms of appointment, uh, bidding processes for tenders, uh, has the capacity to be corrupt and, of course, loot funds, which are meant for students. Much of the crises and the scandals plaguing NASFAS, such as depositing exorbitant amounts into the wrong accounts of students as a and uh, unaccounted for funds, you will find there's conspiracies within the entity in itself in terms of them shifting and laundering money in order to get access to it. Yeah. So we are of the firm belief that he has presided over much more deeper rooted corruption. And of course, the inquiry by the portfolio committee, which will continue and we will be a part of, is going to unearth all of these suspicions that we have. Right, Baman, you can come in here. I mean, there are allegations we're hearing from the committee, allegations, I must repeat, uh, of procurement irregularities of laptops. What do you know about that? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, SASCO has always been at the forefront uh, of championing uh, students' interest. As you can see that now I'm in the car, uh, we are busy day and night. But uh, nonetheless... Part and parcel of our demand as a South African Student Congress was that it was wrong for uh, Dr. Bladen Zamani, the minister, to extend the term of Dr. Carlson. He then further said, we are having a problem 
with yourself with why are you going to extend the date uh, of delivering laptops? Again, there was quietness. We then asked them, what becomes the way forward? We're told that the tender is out, everything is moving very uh, uh, well, but till today, we don't know what becomes a, a, a progress. Don't know if ever they've awarded the tender or if ever they're stuck anywhere. We don't know. Everyone is quiet. So it becomes a problem because we are very impatient as students. Today, uh, we've made sure that South writes to uh, the minister to tell him that uh, we want a report on the delivery of laptops. So till today, we're waiting uh, on, the, on, the, on the report from our own side. But for now, uh, we only know that uh, they were in a final stage of making sure that they give tenders to people. And uh, we don't care who gets the tender, but we have said long time ago that we will probably uh, expect that the government will prioritize SMMEs, will prioritize those who, who, who do not get uh, uh, much more uh, opportunities than giving to white uh, uh, big companies. That was our view as, as, as the student uh, organization. Now, you're saying you did not want the term of office uh, for uh, Dr. Karasa to be uh, extended. Why did you particularly raise that issue sharply with the minister? Yes, it's part, it's part of, 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 of the issues that are raised by the EFF. Uh, there are many complaints about the man uh, from, 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 from his staff, number one, on how he, he manages people. Number two, the man does not account to anyone. The man does not have a board. The man is a boss of himself. The man, till today, there are many students who were funded early January who have not received their funds till today, especially the TVET sector. The man is a problem because he dealt with students through the N plus rule and he, he promised to fix it. He then, uh, he then uh, uh, delayed all of us and he, he, never, he never fixed that. The, the man is a problem. There are students who are wrongly funded. When a student is saying, I'm funded, and the day after, uh, the man is taken, no one accounts for that man. So the man is, is, is a problem. Uh, in the, in the, and also, now they've taken a decision. They've taken a decision to say they are not going to fund students uh, while the academic year has been extended. What kind of rubbish is that? How do you say that you are extending uh, 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 the academic calendar and then you don't extend uh, allowances of students. So must we sleep as a student organization and not fight the man who is a problem to our society? So we are going to fight him uh, and we are going to represent students. And, and I, I have a worry if uh, the quietness of the student command, uh, now the EFF itself is coming on board uh, to represent uh, because you can see that uh, the student command is useless, but we're not there. Uh, so that is our view uh, 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 as SARS, that the men we want him gone, uh, we want uh, the minister to appoint a board, CEO, that's everything very yeah. fast. Thank you. All right, Romanya Matiwane, president of SASCO, and uh, we're back to you, sir. Now, now you, as the EFF, have also called uh, on the public protector to to investigate the irregularities and and the corruption at at at, at Anasfos. What do you want, a particular, uh, in your complaint to the public protector for her to look into? First and foremost, we want the public protector to look into the procurement processes at Anasfos. We have long, of course, advocated for the belief that the tender process must be scrapped uh, because capitalists should exploit the state and uh, maneuver their way to acquiring more money than is intended for the production of basic things. So the first uh, uh, matter that we want the public protector to look into is the matter of the procurement of the laptops, which have still not been dispersed to students. Secondly, we do want the public protector to look into who has been appointed and into what key and strategic positions in the NTT, look into their qualifications, look at which regulatory processes were flouted in appointing these people and the relationship that they have historically with Randall Carlson himself. And of course, these must be reversed on the basis of recommendations from the public protector, who, which are, as we know, constitutionally binding. So we're giving power, giving weight back to that office to intervene in a matter of national importance. 
And of course, but the last thing I think we'd like to advise the EFF is that there must be a consensus across the board of scrapping of the tender system. It's proved futile in, throughout this COVID-19 pandemic and it is unsustainable as a, an economic model in terms of uh, production. We must be able to produce our own laptops. We should be able to produce our own ventilators and all those sorts of things from the higher education sector as a developmental leader. Uh, in terms of all of these things we need. So for, for a sector such as higher education to have to procure laptops when there are people who build and create and invent software within the higher education sector just reveals the lack of appetite and imagination within the sector in itself. But of course, that's our primary objective is to get Dr. Randall Carlson removed because we think and we have the firm belief that he is a thug who has turned Nasfas into his back room and operates it like his kitchen. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's quality, the I mean, describing that particular appearance of Randall Carousel as a horror movie, yet uh, still suggesting that the committee need to launch an inquiry. There is a sense and a feeling generally that this country is a country that likes inquiries. These things mm -hmm. are expensive. They take a lot of money and, and take a lot of unnecessary time. Uh, however, of course, these are legal processes that must be followed, particularly by an oversight body uh, like Parliament, before they reach any conclusion. What, what is your take and feel on inquiries? Absolutely, you are correct. An inquiry is a complete waste of time. And I think it feathers a uh, suspicion that we have that there's a corrupt relationship between Blades Monday and Randall Carlson. Because there's something that alarmed us in terms of the, the workers which we commend for being so brave in terms of defending an entity which is a custodian of the future of students. The workers continued uh, with their testimonies under oath to the portfolio committee, even though the union which, which, which first introduced these concerns now how uh, had pulled out. And that pulling out came after a consultative process behind back doors with Blades Monday. So we are of the firm suspicion that uh, this inquiry, which is frivolous based on the fact that Carlson himself has admitted to corrupt activity in terms of how he's been able to, as an administrator, forward the CVs of those associated to him. And of course, these damning allegations against him. We have the firm view that an inquiry is just a further waste of time given that we are presented by one man's confession and presented with such damning allegations. And of course, his term had come to an end and his extension as the president of SASCO has alluded to is inexplicable. So uh, the inquiry, I'm in total agreement with you that it's a waste of time, which is why we're going to pursue a much harsher process in getting him removed. If he doesn't have any ounce of integrity left within him to resign, we're going to pursue that process. And this inquiry to us is just another frivolous exercise and a waste of taxpayers' money. So now, appreciate your time. Let's leave it there. Head of the presidency in the EFFC now, Tambo, as well as Babanya Matiwane, Sasko, president.